join director Doug as he spans the globe by sea, by land, and air to bring you the best of figures in action! What's your name? I'm Carl Gottlieb. I'm the screenwriter of Jaws, and I played the part of Meadows, the publisher of the newspaper, in that movie. So you, you are a writer and an actor? Yes, and sometimes a director, but in that movie I was a writer and an actor. How did this all come about in 20,000 words or less? Well, uh, Stephen was making a movie, and he showed me the script and asked me what I thought, and I told him which was that it needed improvement. And Dick Zanuck and David Brown, who were the producers, agreed with him. And they hired me to do a rewrite. And when the smoke and dust had cleared, uh, I got shared screenplay credit with Peter Benchley, who wrote the novel in the first draft. It's incredible. How long have you been doing this? It's not like I haven't been asked these questions before. <laughs> well, I'm sure you have. And what was the, what was the most memorable part as far as exciting for you with the writing directing or I mean there must be a ton of information but what about you there was, there, was, there was a scene in the movie where my character goes out in a boat with the police chief and we discover Ben Gardner now later that scene was reshot with just Richard Dreyfus Roy Scheider and the head of Ben Gardner popping out from the boat underwater but the first time that scene was written it was on the surface of the water and the newspaper guy was there and I supposed to reach out and grab the boat and I fell tail over tea kettle into the ocean where I knew there were real sharks and I'm bobbing around in the water and they go cut camera stop get him out of the water and it was pretty exciting well stop that would have been some great footage though well here the, 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 the it was captured on film here I am <laughs> this is the book the jaws log here I am we're, disco oh, we're discovering Ben Gardner's boat here I am going over the side <laughs> Here's them pulling me out. This is Freddie Zendar, the uh, advisor. And this is the Dreyfus boat, Fascinating Rhythm. Oh, that's, that. that's absolutely incredible. So you're, you're offering this book for sale? Absolutely. It's been for sale ever since the summer of 75. It's the best-selling book about the making of a motion picture ever. Well, congratulations. So you'll actually sign it for the fans that come here today? Absolutely. They, uh, they, they buy the book, they get the ins personalized inscription for free. That's excellent. Well, it's such an honor to meet you. I'm just going to turn over to the other side of the ship here. And, uh, sir, what's your name? Joe Alves. Yes, Joe Alves. And what did you do in, regarding the uh, uh, Jaws, or what didn't you do? Well, I, I did, first of all, I was on it before Stephen. Uh, I did the concept sketches. Those black and white. Uh, what happened is uh, Zanuck and Brown, uh, I worked with Stephen on Sugar Land Express, and the producers bought the, uh, the rights to Jaws, and they uh, asked me if I could do some concept sketches based on the galley sheets of the book to sell the studio on the idea of, of the movie. And they had been negotiating with Stephen, uh, but they hadn't signed him yet. So I would go over to his bungalow, and I would show him, and i get real excited about doing this shark movie and he uh, was hesitating well they haven't signed a deal yet so then he came aboard and uh, so we did that and then I did some like uh, 300 storyboards uh, depicting all the action and I was sort of coordinating between uh, because uh, the studio said they couldn't make the shark it would take a year and a half two years so the head of production asked me to see if I could get it made and I got a crew Bob Maddie uh, formal D Disney effects guy and we put a crew together we start making the shark uh, and I did the designing of it and uh, worked with the to get it uh, right on 
and uh, then I did the storyboards to coordinate uh, with Steven what shark we could use. We had three sharks. And there's me uh, with one of the uh, sharks. Uh, we had a little problem with the, with the jaw falling down, so I told <laughs> Steven, we don't need an effects guy, I'll go there and I'll fix the jaw, so I, I did that. And that's uh, basically it. Uh, these are the storyboards I did uh, almost uh, 40 years ago. So we, uh, Carl and I come to these shows together and uh, after 40 years we're sort of amazed people still interested in the movie. Oh, absolutely. It's just an icon of a man versus nature and a little nature, uh, a little overboard. Uh, it's a huge project. Interesting. And then, of course, uh, on Jaws 2, I, I designed it. I was a, a pro associate producer and I directed a lot of second unit. Carl came on to write it. And the third one, uh, 3D, I directed that one. Well, so it's a lot of shark. <laughs> well, a lot of shark. And actually, you're talking about making the, making the shark. That was before computer animation could have made the whole thing. So you needed a physical model. I tell you, CGI would have saved us on a lot of things, especially sailboats out in the distance. And Stephen was really firm, didn't want to see anything out there. They wanted to be isolated. And today, you could blip those out with CGI. But we had to wait till the sailboats passed by. And... CGI would have saved a lot of things, but you know we have a fan base that really likes that shark. Not a computer generated shark, but that particular shark. There is a difference, isn't there? Yeah, there is. It has a character to it, you know. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we never thought uh, this would happen all these years later, because all we did was struggle to get it made. But uh, anyway, so here we are. We do these shows, and uh, this is fun. Keep it alive about um, getting it made, uh, rolling back the tide a little bit, from what I'm hearing, without your storyboard and your ability to actually bring it to Steve as an eye as, as, a, as a photographic experience, or at least your drawings brought it to life so he could see something, being probably obviously a visual person, are you saying that it might have not have ever been created without your talent of making these? I can't say that. Steven Spielberg is a very talented guy. What I did is I, I helped in the making of the shark that year okay. because most of the effects people say it would take a year or two years. I found Bob Maddy and we put together a crew and when they said the shark didn't work the shark, basically Bob did it in four to five months when everybody said it would take a year and a half, two years. So we would test it. If it worked, we would try to shoot it. I would go to Steven and, I would, and I'd say, Steven, we have the shark doing this. What do you think? He says, okay, we'll do that. So in the end, we were shooting storyboards. Now, my contribution is working with the director and, and laying these out. Uh, those concept sketches were basically done from the book, and they look a little bit Moby Dickish, you know, kind of thing. But at that time, we weren't trying to get technical. We were just trying to entertain the idea of making this movie. Uh, and the studio was less than excited about it, to well, say the least. Well, I'm, that's my point, is I think because of you and what your skills and your people you were working with, you took them over the edge to really get them to say, yeah, let's, let's go with it. There were a few of us that are very determined. I would say the effects crew, obviously Stephen, Verna Fields, the editor who won the Academy Award, uh, uh, Bill Gilmore, who is a production uh, man on it. Uh, we were a tight-knit group that really... Regardless of what people said, we were going to get this made. Now, did we know it was going to be a big success? No. Uh, we just struggled. We got it made. And then it became a big success. And then, of course, then the executives all take credit. Of course. Well, that goes to show you so much talent and so much energy and determination. And, and we're going to do this whatever it takes. That's really what's in behind the movie industry, and that's what people like you convey to us, and it's hard to get your story out. So we're so happy that you're here and, and are sharing your experiences, and, and I'm sure encouraging the youngsters that, you know, do go for it. Well, yes, you know, and, and I want to uh, explain to a lot of the people out there that making movies is more than the red carpet. There, you know, that's all very glamorous, but it's a really a lot of hard work. Early calls, cold, wet, and uh, you just get out there and, and get it done, you know. That's basically it. Well, you're a role model. And again, thank you, sir, and welcome to Tulare Sci-Fi Con. My, my pleasure.